Um, good afternoon. Hello, I'm Sally Rideout, uh, Government Affairs Specialist for the Southwest Indiana Chamber. We're here today with current State Representative Ron Bacon, who is running for election to the Warren County Council in the at-large seats. Uh, today we have Tara Barney, who's President and CEO of the Southwest Indiana Chamber, Sherry Sherman, who's the Executive Director at the Warwick County Chamber of Commerce, and two members of our Government Affairs Committee, uh, Mike Schottmeyer and Carrie Quigel. So welcome to everyone. And uh, we're gonna dive right in, Tara. I'll turn the conversation over to you. Well, thank you, Sally. And uh, thank you for being with us, Ron. We sure appreciate the chance to uh, uh, spend a few minutes with you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start out the question that you know you're gonna get, and that is about um, the COVID impacts on the budget. So would you share with us, uh, you know, I know that there's gonna be differences in the budget availability in uh, Warwick County, and I'd like to know what, what priorities you think deserve uh, either protection or increased uh, attention, and where you might see some of the cuts or adjustments that might have to be made to accommodate that with the new uh, resource levels. Okay, well, the, uh, the one thing I do know, and I don't know a whole lot about what's going on with Warrior County budget at this time, because I'm more focused on the state, but I do know that the budget's on, um, has been frozen for next year, for 2021. So they have gone through that and uh, they are doing a across the board uh, salary increase, I understand of approximately 3%, uh, not three, uh, yeah, th approximately 3%, but not an exact uh, a number on that. So with the income, that, or with the income level that they have, I know that the, uh, what is it? Uh, the unemployment rate for Warwick County is uh, better than is on the state. It's, it's about 5.6% right now. So uh, we won't have as much problem as, as some of the other counties, we hope. And hopefully that will continue to, to go down so that we won't see the, the impact of that uh, with Warwick County. But we will continue, uh, what we'll need to monitor and continue to do is fund uh, safety and security for the county and hope to continue uh, doing what we have as far as roads and infrastructure. And then if possible, continue to improve the uh, quality of life and then work hard on the economic development. Carrie, do you wanna ask a question here? I'm, I, I own them, I'm happy to keep going. Well, I think, so, <laughs> yeah, I was like, maybe if we can turn the mic up for the next question and I'm, I'm kind of doing some things in chat here. So Mike, go for mm -hmm. it. Sure. Um, Ron, as you know, um, economic development incentives rest with the county council. You've owned a small business. You know how important those can be. Uh, what will you consider as those incentives come in front of you, such as tax phase ends and other kind of direct incentives that uh, sometimes start with the commissioners, but at the end of the day, you have to vote for them? Yeah, we have to vote. Right. What I want to see, I was on the council once before for four years back in the early 90s. And uh, when we did tax incentives and tax abatements, the one thing that we didn't do was hold the businesses accountable for what they said they were going to do. And I feel that that has come in, uh, to fruition with the current county council now. So I want to see that continued. If someone's going to come and ask us for a tax abatement and they're going to bring 200 jobs, 300 jobs, whatever, then uh, over a certain period of time, they've got to prove that they're going to be able to do that to continue to get to tax abatement. And I want to see that continued. Uh, so otherwise, I feel that uh, finding the right mix for what we need in Warwick County uh, is going to be very, very important. I know with the Warwick Wellness Trail, we're trying to work on that uh, and uh, some of the other uh, manufacturing, small manufacturing in Warwick County. So that's what I'm going to focus on. So Ron, on that question, would you give uh, just as much incentive to someone who makes giant investments in, in the new age we're in? Uh, often that's the case rather than bringing in jobs. Uh, so if they make two, three hundred million dollars investments, that's critical to the tax base. Would you right critical for them? what? Yeah, for what we already have. Let's yeah. say if Alcoa is already there, uh, and then they're going to bring in two or three million dollars. Uh, in equipment and acts for the, the uh, tax abatement for that, then yes, I agree, we need to be doing that okay. for the ones that are already established. And also we need to look at small business. One thing, uh, I was the owner of a small business for 37 years and that was one of the things we didn't do. Uh, we looked for big business, bringing in lots of jobs and that, but we never did a lot of economic development for the existing small business that's already in the county serving the tax base.
Jerry, I think you're up next. Okay, um, Ron, um, we certainly have Friedman Park and Scales Lake and the County Council has given some um, money to do some um, fix ups and some additional things to Scales Lake and certainly uh, Friedman Park is, is coming mm -hmm. along. What are your thoughts on um, bringing that along even further and uh, helping grow the quality of life issues for uh, for the residents of Warwick County. Yeah, I agree with that. I was just at Friedman Park this past month, and it's it's wonderful. And so the development there has been great, and so I'm very happy to continue that. And hopefully, it will do a good job. Scales Lake, I haven't been to uh, for this year, and so I'm not sure what all is going on out there. But they're sort of limited with the the difference of what they can and can't do with the size of the. Uh, operation and what what's there. I'd also like to see, I mean, I want to see that continue, but uh, it's going to be a little different than Friedman Park. But I also want to see us move north uh, in, in that area. I live just south of Bluegrass Nature Preserve, and I feel that's one of our biggest draws for outside of the county to bring people in and for the county uh, people who live here, because we have bikers and uh, hikers and uh, just all kinds of things going on out here but none of the development in as far as the trail system and that is, is happening here. And I've had some, some talks with the commissioners and some of the councilmen about that's one of the places we need to look. We already own a 20 foot of right of way on most of the roads out on uh, Campbell Township that the county doesn't even have to purchase. So all it would be needed would be to able to find the money to put the trails and uh, get that in. So since we have that uh, asset at our fingertips, we need to use it. And uh, things are going good out here. We're, we're very happy to have that. So we need to work in that direction and then work the trails up towards Linville and the Selvin area where we have a lot of other uh, economic or quality of life development areas to work on. Okay, thanks. Eric? Good afternoon. Um, what is the priority issue that you plan to champion during your term on the council? <laughs> balanced budget. <laughs> so I think with uh, being on the uh, state rep job for so many years and that uh, we need to always look at that on a, on a yearly basis as we do the budget. We've got to do a balanced budget. We've got to not spend more money than we take in, but we've got to wisely use the money that we do take in. Uh, and then we've got to partner with uh, the state and uh, any other federal uh, issue or grants and things that we can get. So we need to focus on that and, and utilize as, as much as possible what we can leverage from the state and from the federal government. So uh, to help the county as well as we can. Because Warren County is growing, it's still growing and it's doing a great job. It's, it's uh, second or third fastest growing in the county, in the state rather, and uh, in the end is doing quite well. So we want to continue that. I think that's well put Ron and having Warren County succeed is great for our region. So mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's a good observation. I'm curious, we've all been through, you know, six months that we never anticipated, and there have been some learnings from the COVID experience, to say the least. Oh, yes. Are there things that occur to you as you think about this role that you're moving to from the legislature that, that will um, change the way we, we uh, manage government? Well, I hope so, to a certain extent. I mean, I, I think we can always improve no matter what, and we, we learn from what is going on. I've had uh, many talks with the uh, county health department working on how to uh, procure the PPE and the equipment that they need to operate under the COVID instances and to help out the other uh, businesses to uh, educate them. Uh, we probably need to work really a lot harder on education. Uh, one of my pet peeves, uh, which has always been uh, 50 years in the healthcare field, and one of the things we used to do uh, long, long ago was educate our patients uh, before we ever sent them home. And the same thing with, with uh, county government, with the same thing with uh, state government. We don't educate enough, the people enough of what's available to them and how to do, uh, how to get what we need. Let's say the community crossroads grants. You know, if uh, you're not one of the good counties that jumps right on there and, and does everything they need to do, then you're gonna get the money. But if you're one of the counties that doesn't really know what to do, uh, we don't educate you on how to do it. We don't do that well enough. So that's one of the things that I think the county needs to do with the departments here. Another thing, uh, I'm not for 
totally sure on how it operates, but my other complaint was, uh, especially when I was uh, in the coroner's office as the coroner, we as a county didn't use the purchasing department enough to offset our purchases and to get uh, better pricing. So we need to educate the office holders for their departments that utilizing a, a centralized purchasing department is gonna be much better for them than to go down and try and do it themselves. So things of that nature we need to work on. Well, thank you. Uh, do any of my colleagues have any other quick questions or Ron, do you have final thoughts that you wanna make sure we communicate out on your behalf? Because okay. I know this has been a different year for uh, campaigning. And, oh yeah. Uh, video will help. Well, I want to thank you guys for everything you've done uh, for Warwick County because we've worked as a region. And you mentioned that earlier. This is the Southwestern Indiana Regional Chamber and Warwick County. I've been a board member of the, of the Warwick County Council now for my second term. And uh, we've worked with the region and done, things, and done things well for Southwestern Indiana. And we did that also as our state representative. All of our delegates uh, from all of the districts uh, work together for the region and for Southwestern Indiana. And I think that's what I want to continue to do as a councilman in Warwick County to work with the region and because it's good for all of us. What's good for Vandenberg County is good for Warwick County, the same thing, Posey. We all benefit from all of that. So I want to continue to do that. Sherry, any other questions? You're muted. You're muted uh, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know how much time we have have left, but uh, I guess I guess I will quickly ask um, uh, Highway 66 and Grim Road. Um, we have been advocating for a stoplight for years, and uh -huh. that um, and it still seems to be uh, caught there. We know we have hotels. We know we have other businesses that have said, you know, if we can get that in there so that they can get in and out in a safe way that uh, we would have additional development. Um, what are your thoughts on um, the county putting forward um, money, um, a portion to um, get that stoplight in there? Well, I think uh, we, we need to do that one way or the other. I know that many, many years ago when we worked with NDOT to put that the infrastructure for that there, uh, it was to do that. And their plan was to put a stoplight there. So mm -hmm. I actually sent a letter to them uh, asking them why they haven't done it. And of course, they're always saying it's, it's in process. They're looking at the whole uh, corridor there, the whole Lloyd all the way up to uh, uh, 61 in that area. So they want to do what's best for that. And they understand what we want, uh, but uh, it's, it's a matter of getting uh, NDOT to do what we want. So we're still working on that. And I think if uh, we can get the approval of NDOT to do it, I wouldn't have any problem getting the county to put the money forward uh, because it's gonna benefit us. Mm -hmm. If it's NDOT's problem is the money, I think we could take care of that. Okay, thanks. Okay. This has been a really good conversation. We've covered on a lot of topics um, really quickly and hopefully, uh, you know, allowed uh, uh, voters to get a good idea of the issues that are before you uh, and before them as they make some decisions this fall. So thank you, Ron, for joining us today. Uh, and we uh, will say goodbye. And we know we'll be working with you on other things going forward in the future. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Ron.